to show you how to make a Gjord's knot. A Gjord's knot creates a pile textile and there's two elements. There's the background plain weave and here I've woven two rows of it and then you have the knots. So between each row of plain weave you have a row of knots and the plain weave is woven selvage to selvage. So the knots are made over two warps on a closed shed and in this case I have 36 warp ends and I'm able to have 18 knots because I have two threads that each knot needs to be tied over. So I want to show you how to make the knot. You're going to go in through the center, over the top, and back down. I'm tying these from a long strand of yarn instead of cutting separate lengths. I like to do this especially if I'm doing a lot of different colors. I find it quicker and also I think it uses less yarn. What I'm doing is I'm pulling down with the tail and keeping this other side, the short side, as short as I want it to be about an inch long. So now you can see I'm skipping over to do the other two knots in the same color. I'm using uh, sewing scissors. I like them because they're small and they fit easy in my hand. Um, but any scissors is fine. You just want them to be sharp to cut those threads. Okay, so now I'm done with that color. And I'm going to do the last two knots. So again, I'm going in through the center, over the top, bring those tails out, and now I'm holding this short end but pulling the slack out on the long end. So one more time in through the center, over the top, and tighten the knot up. So let me show you how I work my design. So I made it on graph paper, and there's 18 squares corresponding to the number of knots that I have possible. And then each square represents a knot across. What these two check marks mean is I've tied two rows of each knot. So I tied a knot across like this in this pattern. I wove two rows of plain weave and then I repeated the same pattern and then I went up to the next row. Checking it off just helps me keep my place. So my last step in weaving is to secure it all with plain weave. You're going to weave this across just like you might in tapestry. Bubbling, changing sheds, and beading. So on this heiress loom, I always start across the first um, pick in the up position. So each time I repeat, it's always up and then the next pass is the um, down or B shed. That way I'm always alternating the sheds throughout the textile. After you've finished weaving your pile, now it's time to trim it. You can see how the surface is not very even. So if I wanted a long pile, I would just trim it to make it even. But in this case, I want a shorter pile, so I'm going to start trimming. I'm going to start at the top. I'm using these applique scissors, but you could also use sewing scissors like this uh, that are very sharp. You need really good sharp scissors to do this. So I'm just going to start cutting 
And you're gonna, I'm always a little conservative. I can always cut more later, but I can't cut less. So I'm gonna use my first cut across as my gauge. And you can see how these scissors are nice because they allow you to cut pretty straight across. We'll trim those edges later. So once I get this trimmed, I have to decide if I like that or if I want it a little shorter. But you can see it's already looking better. I think this is the fun part because it just really cleans it up. And now you can see the pattern is developing. It's, it's crisper than when it was longer and not trimmed. And on the edges, I'm gonna trim those a little shorter than rest of it. You can see how my scissors are nice and sharp. So this looks a little longer to me. So you're just going to keep trimming until you have the look and feel that you want.